Hi, I'm Cameron Cushman with the Kauffman Foundation, and I'm going to be guest hosting today's episode of Top of Mind. Today we're at Beer Station in Kansas City, Missouri, and we're actually going to be setting two firsts today. One, it's our first ever time to guest host, and two, we're going to hopefully be drinking some beer. So let's go on in and check out Beer Station. This is Top of Mind. This week on Top of Mind, we are here at Beer Station, and I have our founder, uh, John Couture, with us today. He's going to show us around and tell us a little bit about uh, his startup. Uh, Beer Station was uh, a recent One Million Cups alum here in uh, Kansas City, and uh, we're very excited to be here. Thanks for having us. You're very welcome. Thanks for coming. So tell us a little bit about the inspiration behind Beer Station. How did you get started? Where did the idea come from, and uh, why, why beer? Um, basically, the genesis of it was uh, a trip that my friend and I took to uh, Europe in 2006. Uh, we really enjoyed European beer culture. We liked the European beer cafe vibe. Uh, and we, tried to de we decided that if we ever found a concept that could m merge that with our love of beer and bring it to Kansas City, uh, we wanted to do that. So we basically I did some research in 2011 and found out about this uh, a tasting bar, bottle shop, craft beer concept which is basically a blend between a tavern and a package store. So we had to change city laws to do it, but uh, that's kind of the genesis of how it came. So tell me about that, you had to change city laws. Why, why was a concept like this illegal or, or why did the city frown upon it? There was a, a city ordinance that prevented us from opening because it, um, it was, there was a, the ordinance was enacted because they were having some issues with uh, taverns over serving people and then trying to sell them packaged beer to go and uh, taking advantage of basically of uh, a certain population. So uh, we had to work with the city, engage them and try to look for ways to maintain those protections for the community, but also open up doors for businesses like us to open. So we hear this from entrepreneurs a lot. They have trouble with cities getting occupancy permits, building permits, things like that. Obviously, this, this involved a whole other industry of, of the alcoholic beverage industry. Um, how did the city work with you to make this happen? Were they pretty approachable? Were they open? Uh, how did, tell us a little bit about that experience. Um, I, I, I hired counsel from Polsonelli Sugar, and we worked. Uh, we actually engaged uh, Councilman Jim Glover first. And he was an early proponent and really uh, was extremely helpful and kind of worked behind the scenes to make sure that we could lay the groundwork so ever, all the community, regulated industries, and the city would all be happy uh, with any change we might enact. Uh, and so from there, it was really, everybody was very, very helpful and really wanted this business to succeed and open. It just was a matter of making sure that everything was, all those, the ordinance was, uh, the, the purpose of the ordinance was maintained. So now that you've paved the way and sort of opened up this industry, do you expect that other people will follow and that we will have many more of these models or is Beer Station looking to expand? Um, we're just getting started and just getting open. There's a, I want to make sure we do this right, exactly right. And there's a, it's a pretty complicated concept. Um, I think it'd be great if more of these open the city, honestly, maybe a little bit away from me. But uh, the more, what we found in other cities like Portland, for instance, roughly the size of Kansas City, is the more, uh, the more beer industry you have in there, the more popular it becomes. And there are a lot of people who can do well. So um, I hope more people like this will open it. I'm sure they will at some point. It's just a matter of time. So go back to the experience. What do I, as someone who walks in your doors, what do I expect when I walk into Beer Station? What people really like is that we make uh, the world of beer approachable. There's a lot of people who, for instance, might say that I, I drink Boulevard wheat, and that's kind of as far as they go. Or Bud Light, you know, they might say, but they're interested in trying something different. What we're trying to do is we're not beer snobs, we're beer enthusiasts. So we try to open up doors to people to try different kinds of beers and uh, just learn about, there's so many flavors for beers. It's just like food. Uh, and what we try to do is be approachable and uh, make it uh, not an intimidating experience and just kind of guide people through and then find something for them to like. And we pretty much every time can find something people like. Even if people don't think they like beer that much, we can usually find something that they, there's so many flavors to choose from, we can usually find something they like. 
Tell us about your experience in opening Beer Station. How long have you been open? What did that look like? What was the reception from the community and, and your customers early on? We had a, uh, before we opened, we had a, a, an extensive social media campaign. We guided people throughout the uh, opening process or the, you know, kind of informed people. And we had such an engaged community. We had over 1,300 people like us before we opened our doors. Um, we also engaged people to, uh, with this bar you see behind us, uh, people donated their own wood. We had people donate their own wood and to build our bar. And so people kind of felt they had a stake in it and they really enjoyed being a part of that and seeing pieces of what they own kind of coming into the bar. Uh, so we opened in December 2012 and immediately it was a very strong, very strong uh, opening. And it's just carried it in solid sense. Um, a very, we have a very a core group of people living nearby who are uh, very loyal and really appreciate it. We also have beer tourists who come from other cities who learn about us through Yelp or through other reviews and uh, make a point to stop by here. Um, so it's been uh, solid since the start. Fantastic. Do you serve anything else besides beer? Yeah, we do. We serve wine. Um, we do not serve spirits, uh, but we also have a food menu. We, have, uh, we locally source as much as we can, so we work with farm to market bread and they uh, provide some delicious pretzels for us, like pre uh, warm pretzels that we serve with dipping sauces, uh, locally made brats uh, from a German restaurateur downtown, Martin Heuser from Affair. Uh, we have meat and cheese plates, we've got grill gourmet grilled cheese. Uh, yeah, we've got a little bit of everything. I'm coming back for lunch, that sounds delicious. So tell us a little bit about the culture of the place. Obviously you wanted to import some of the sort of European beer culture. What does that look like at Beer Station? Um, it's. We try not to be stuffy with the way we do things. There's definitely a European vibe, uh, but we try to make it homey and we try to um, work with people. We, we get a lot of information from our customers. Uh, we don't just push information out to them like other businesses might. Uh, for instance, we had a local uh, neighbor who's a horticulturalist and he said, you know, what about planting an herb garden in front of your uh, beer, in front of, the, in front of the store? And we, we do a, something on Wednesday nights where we naturally infuse ingredients into beer. Uh, using French presses and so now we have an herb garden growing outside and we have hops growing up our stairwell where a little bit later in the summer we'll be able to basically use all these ingredients to freshly infuse them into beer which is becoming really popular. It's kind of a foodie trend with beer. Unbelievable. I've never heard of that before. Very interesting. And tell us a little bit about, you were, you were sharing earlier about uh, the bike culture that comes in. Tell us a little bit about that. There's a, a big cross-section between the cycling community and beer, uh, something that I was really wasn't aware of fully until I opened, but there are a ton of cyclists who, I guess they feel that they've, <laughs> they've exercised and they could, it's guilt-free drinking, I guess, afterwards. So uh, we expanded our bike racks uh, and we have the most bike rack space of any place in Waldo now. Um, and we really encourage the cycling community and they're very passionate and fantastic customers for us. As you have been open, what's been the biggest surprise that your customers have told you? Have you, have you sold more out of the cases than at the bar? What, uh, what has really surprised you in sort of from your initial business model to actually being open for a few months? Our biggest surprise has been uh, the, the demographics for our customer base. Um, before we opened, we thought that we were, our age range would be primarily about 25 to 40 to 45 years old. It's really 25 to 70. Um, we have, there's a lot of older craft beer fans. Um, I had no idea how many, uh, but they're a very strong base of our, our customer base. And that's been very surprising. It's been fun because you see people of all ages engaging and talking to each other and learning, learning about beer from each other. And, uh, when you have that wide of a range, it's really fun to see all these people mixing it up and having the, the enjoying the same kind of experience across ages. Tell us about the role that social media has played in the growth and evolution of your station. Social media has been absolutely critical to the business. We do very little advertising. Uh, we have such an engaged customer base that it's really easy for us to communicate through social media. And we also get lots of input about how to develop the, the, our business through customers, which we really love. For instance, we had a lot of requests from customers for board games. People really, there's a, there's a big board game resurgence. And so we started to, um, let, ask customers to, to donate their board games and we give them a free pretzel or something and now we've actually just uh, recently we had people vote for their top their favorite board games across different categories and then we're going to purchase copies of those games and start to host a board game night every week uh, which people are very excited about so we let people engage and tell us you know, what are your favorite games and we will help provide this atmosphere for you uh, and we want to carry that on and make that a, a, an ongoing thing and letting people tell us what they want 
instead of us guessing what they want and pushing things onto them. Well, thanks for having us. This has been very informative. Uh, I want to show our viewers this great place that you've built here. But first, I think we need to sample your product. I think we need a beer. Sounds good. All right, let's do it. All right, so you're the, you're the owner, you're the master. What do you think we should have today? Um, my suggestion would be Reisdorf Kolsch. Uh, this is a beer from Cologne, Germany, and it was actually the beer that my business partner and I toasted over the night we decided to go into business together. Um, it's a delicious German beer, very light, very drinkable, um, very popular, and it comes in this kind of glass, which is unusual, that uh, it's called Stange glass, and it's uh, just kind of fun to drink of. It's got a little bit of character to it when you drink it, so that's my suggestion. Fantastic. Let's do it. All right. So this is our glass rinser. This is what this does is uh, it, it basically lubricates the glass and it prevents, uh, it, it lowers the amount of foam that happens during, uh, it's not just for show. So it actually uh, prevents a little bit of over foaming when you're pouring. And so this is just water? Yep, just okay, water, yep, just go. water. It's my kind of interview. Absolutely, prost. Prost. Mm. <sighs> Excellent choice. Thank you. Love it. So tell me about the bar. Obviously, when you walk in, this is the first thing that you see. Uh, what is Marion Plotz, and, and what was the inspiration behind this? Uh, for anybody who's been to Munich, Marion Plotz is the city center subway stop near Oktoberfest. So we thought that was, uh, it kind of went with our transit vibe, and it also, uh, we thought that'd be kind of fun to actually make this feel like this is a piece of subway that was like dropped, like a subway wall that was dropped into the back bar. The green tile is actually based off a different uh, subway stop, the Alexander train, uh, subway stop in Berlin. Uh, we had local tile artists hand paint these tiles to match the wow. green, the entire underground of Alexander Plaza. It looks like this, it's gorgeous. So we kind of blended the two subway stops together to give it this kind of colorful vibe. Fantastic, anything else about the bar that's, that's noteworthy here? Um, we basically are taps. The one big difference with us is that a lot of uh, establishments will just uh, tap the same beer over and over. When the keg's out, they put the same beer back on. We rotate all the time. So whatever this one goes out, if this Delirium Tremens goes out, a whole other beer will go on there. We're constantly cleaning our lines. And so customers, it's one of our biggest selling points. The customers love coming in here and never knowing what's going to be on tap. You know, they just, they just love kind of being surprised. Uh, so that's, that's been a pretty noteworthy thing for us. What's the quickest you've ever gone through an entire keg? <sighs> Hour. Wow. We've, uh, for some uh, extremely uh, popular beers, seasonal beers, uh, special releases, uh, you can get massive crowds and you're just pouring and pouring and pouring and pouring and then it's gone. All right, well, let's see the rest of the place. Sounds good. All on you. So this is our um, real-time LCD. Uh, one of my pet peeves when I would go around to different beer, beer, uh, beer establishments is that you'd get paper menus and most of the taps would be outdated. You know, they're, sorry we're out, sorry. We're... This is a way we have a direct input uh, with the, via computer so when a tap goes out, we can change it and every single, everything we put on tap, we have all sorts of interesting information so people can know how the, what the alcohol, alcohol content is, what the country of origin is, what style it is. So it also educates people, but it's also um, updated so you know that whatever you order is gonna be on tap. So how about let's check out the coolers? Sure. All right. So these are our coolers, and with the Tasting Bar Bottle Shop concept, the cool thing about this is um, you can buy these to go, uh, and a lot of these, these bottles are available to go. The prices are just like package store prices. If you bu buy it here, you can also open it on site, and we will we'll open it for you, pour it into the right glassware. What people really like um, that's different is that you can try something on tap, and if you like it, you can take it home that night. That's great. Uh, you know, because a lot of times you, you have something right. and you're, then like a week later you're at a package store and you're like, what was that great beer I tried? I don't remember the name of it. But here we'll say, we can say it's right there if you want to take it home. Uh, so people really enjoy having the flexibility and they also love the kind of tactile experience of like shopping and picking out their own bottles. Uh, it's kind of a geek-tastic thing that people like to do with beers. Uh, so people really like the flexibility of either come, just grabbing a quick six-pack to go or we might have people after work who come here and just grab a six pack and, oh, I'll stop and have a quick beer. And they'll just hang out in their business suit, you know, and, and then just take a beer for home. So people like being able to do both of that here. So what's your capacity here? How many different kinds of beer are you able to offer? 
We rotate, sometimes we have displays, so our, our, we don't have like a set capacity. We have hundreds of beers, um, but there's no, depending on what, what's going on and what styles we're featuring, it goes up and down. What does your typical customer walk away with? A six pack, do they buy more? I would say, there's, we do a lot of, um, people usually get a six pack and then maybe a, a, a bomber or a 750, which is a larger format bottle uh, that you might see with Boulevard Smokestacks, for instance. Um, usually, there's a lot of people who walk here from the neighborhood and they'll come up and just get a six pack, um, you know, every few days they might come up and grab a six pack or something like that. So we do a lot of, um, you know, six packs and that kind of thing. So you, John, you said you had a hundred, hundreds of beers mm -hmm. here. Which one's your favorite? Well, one right now with the warmer weather hitting, uh, a personal favorite of mine and a lot of customers love is Weinefestan's uh, Hefeweizen. Uh, a lot of people have had Hefeweizens. This is my personal favorite. Um, Did you have to practice saying that several times? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love hearing customers trying to pronounce it too. But it's, it's, a, it's a little bit of a challenge to say. It's a mouthful. Um, but it's just a delicious, refreshing summer beer. And we found that even though we're not a German place, we're European, German beers sell really well here. Um, they're light, they're refreshing, they're really um, approachable. And this is a, the, the Hefeweizens are really de delicious banana-like flavor that people really like. It's a, it's a very good gateway beer, we like to joke about, like, to get, and get people into the craft beer world. So where to next? How about checking out the beer garden? Sounds great. All right, yeah. So this is our um, four season beer garden. Uh, it's meant to feel like a Bavarian beer hall. Uh, no TVs up here. We really are trying to encourage the kind of European communal atmosphere uh, for hanging out together. Yeah, it definitely does have that sort of European feel and it's great to have uh, the fresh air coming in here. We can hear the birds chirping in the background. Um, I always thought it was interesting that the sort of German and European beer garden culture never really transferred to the United States. Why do you think that is and, and, and how does Beer Station try to fix that? Well, we, I just realized when I went to other, when, when I was in Germany, that I really loved meeting people from other countries, sitting down at a big table and, you know, kind of being, not forced, but basically having people, you know, kind of getting out of your element a little bit. So we've had lots of friendships being forged just since we've uh, opened for people who just pop down and start talking to somebody about what beer you're drinking. And then you know, people start to meet here and then, or neighbors around here like to gather up here. This is a lot of neighbors like to gather this place. So I just really wanted to kind of forge that kind of community that, that beer can, can help. And what was it like in the winter time? It's four seasons, so we actually can heat this. And so it's really, it's popular year round. So we shut the garage doors and it's nice and toasty in the winter and we open the doors and get nice fresh air in the, in the spring and summer. So it's great all year, which is fantastic. I love the picnic tables too and the long benches. What, what, what's been the customer reaction to that versus the, your standard tables? People, people really, um, I've been surprised at how much people say that they are very happy that there aren't TVs and everything up here. It's by design and people like having a little bit more of an old school feel. Um, my, my neighbor hand built these picnic tables for us from scratch, uh, which we involve, you know, we involve the community as much as possible. And we have a gigantic blown up picture on our wall that people absolutely love. It's a piece of Kansas City history. It's actually the Heim Beer Garden at Electric Park that was in Kansas City's East Bottoms and the photo's circa 1899. That um, back here? That's it. And I, uh, I found it through UMKC's archives and we had it blown up uh, to really make you feel like you're kind of immersed in an old school beer garden. And so when people find out that's actually Kansas City, they're pretty blown away. It's just kind of really fun to see that piece of Kansas City history here. And it gives you a kind of all enveloping feel that you're really in an old school beer garden. You know, on your way outside, I want to show you one last thing. Great. So finally, we're here at one of our newest things we've done. We've um, recruited a local horticulturalist who's um, planted an herb garden and we're growing hop vines, uh, Cascade and Centennial hop vines around all the railings in our exterior. Uh, what we want to do is use these herbs. We have got thyme, basil, rosemary, uh, mint, and freshly infused ingredients into beer. Uh, so we also are going to have exterior seating that we're just about done uh, getting past so we can expand our and have a um, seating outside and have people smell the fresh floral uh, hop vines when late summer hits. So we really want to kind of immerse people and this is a great way for us to do it and, and have some nice pretty little side uh, things for people to look at when they're outside. This is great. Well, hey, thanks so much for having us today. Really appreciate the tour. Thanks for the beer. You bet, man. And, thanks uh, for coming by. Yeah, John, this was great. So uh, this has been Top of Mind from Beer Station in Kansas City, Missouri.